does job creation fit into this, though? Because, it you know, doesn't. is being mayor or governor or even president, does that basically mean, okay, let me campaign, like I'm not, and I'm going to say I'm not going to raise taxes, well, but the minute I get in, I know I'm going to have to well, say, uh-oh, uh, hold up, Hermine, let me, let me go to Amy. Well, real quickly, Rom even said, you know, is it throwing the, the line out there, I'll cut my salary and I'll cut my staff's salary. I mean, it's the beginning, but it was yeah. an idea. Yeah. Truly, but truly. Is that going to make a difference? I, I think to a point Probably Lee not. Allen was making earlier, you've got to look at these candidates for what they say, for what they message, for what they stand for. The candidate is one thing. When they get in office, mm. it's another thing. They're, they're usually not consistent. <laughs> we run, we, we play personality politics. Who's got the best personality? Who's the cutest? Mm -hmm. Who said this? whose makeup was good, da 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 We play those kind of things, but you better listen to what these messages are, these people, because well, we've got get, some serious problems. And Miguel you know, is not charismatic at all, and he kind of got lost in the shuffle because he's not charismatic, he's because probably, he doesn't have a strong personality. Yeah. Good but, manager, but, but he probably, excellent manager. Yeah. And he probably has, say he, probably, he, he arguably has the best message. That's I've right. seen him in two debates That's where right. he pretty much yeah. pulverized the competition. Let me take a phone call, he's Lee Allen. He's the hero Washington of the campaign. Oh. Oh, I, I like that. Analogy. I like that. Yes. Well, caller, are you there? Mabel, thanks for calling. Off 63rd, Mabel, talk to us. Hi, my name is Mabel James. I'm a senior citizen and I'm a black female. And I want to say they need to just get off the tax thing because anybody get in, going to raise taxes. Right. We have a deficit here. Then the next thing is the race game. He's a Jew. One's a uh, Hispanic, and that needs to stop. We don't, we're tired of the race game. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I want to say, and uh, Emmanuel has the best message. Wow, Mabel, thanks for well, your call. She said Emmanuel has the best he message. Does. Lee, Lee Allen, you know, break. it's looking like a landslide on Rahm Emanuel. I want to ask the three of you this, though, before we go to break. Consensus candidacy, is this a figment of our imagination or is this a real thing in Chicago when it comes to race, class, and gender? It seems as if Del Valle and Chico may split a vote. It seems as if Mosley Braun, Doc Walls, Van Pelt Watkins may split a vote. It seems as if a lot of those communities have been divided to the point where they're gonna vote for Rom. Lee Allen, what do you think? Is there some such thing and should there ever been any concept of consensus candidacy. I think what people don't, I think that would be uh, thinking about things in a 30 year old past, it mm -hmm. makes sense. However, there's been a fragmentation even in the African American community in terms of community, you know, it used to be just community organizers. Now you have an entrepreneurship class, now you have people that are really in the schools and families. So when you look at the fragmentation mm -hmm. in terms of people's orientations within, within the issue, there, the consensus candidacy is, is a joke to be able to prop up a, a traditional way of doing things in, in a way and in a world that doesn't exist in that anymore. Oh. And that's where you look at Carol and the whole consensus process. You had grassroots people, which uh, Patricia Watkins, Dr. Patricia Watkins mm -hmm. and Doc Walls come from. And then Carol is more so the elitist business establishment candidate mm -hmm. outside of maybe her mean. But until you, 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 until, <laughs> until you get to the point of red that, that the community is fractionalized. Yeah. And, 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 and until that is recognized, Reconcile, there can be no consensus. Okay, this is interesting. So no consensus. Hermine, yeah. what do you think? I mean, you got three prominent African-American candidates. We have two, uh, uh, Meeks and Danny Davis, who said, uh, we'll step out so Carol can have hers. But you still got Doc Walls and Patricia in the mix. What's up with that? Well, Lee Allen is saying is absolutely correct. The consensus candidate, what we did is we condensed. We didn't consense. We condensed, mm -hmm. okay? What the ministers did is they chose a candidate. Business people were looking for a candidate. The politicians chose a candidate, and then everybody else got a candidate. But you gotta get but the, you, if, if the, a consensus means, see that the little, little, little meeting that took place at Operation Push made no sense to me whatsoever. Because if you can't get Doc and Watkins out of the race, you have no consensus candidate. Well, mate. they looked at the majors. They looked at, they looked at Danny Davis, they looked at James Mick, they looked at Carol Mosley yeah. Brown. Those were the majors, and it was like, which one is the best? Let's see if we can. That was strategy. That was a winning strategy. To Lee Allen's point, that was great 30 years ago. Yeah. It's not so good now. So when, and, and the black community, and I think we just have to admit this and we have to say this, it is not monolithic, hmm. it is not unified, Truly. it is scattered and it is fractionalized. So people are looking at this thing, politics now, 
very, very differently. The community organizers, the activists are looking at it differently. We also have a generational gap. Big time. I think huge Big in the time. black community. And I think all of these factors came into play and were being recognized. The winning formula for the mayor of the city of Chicago is you got to get a third black, you got to get a third white, mm. and you got to get a third Hispanic. Wow. And whoever gets that, that's the coalition, that's the new coalition. The, uh, like the lady said, a race politics needs to get away. We need to go for equality. We need to look at opportunity. Mm. We need to look at innovation. And we need to look the at Chicago. what is going to work for this city. Okay, hold tight, Hermine. You mentioned the generational gap, and I'm coming back to you, Amy. The next generation in Chicago has a voice and would like to inquire about what the next mayor will do as well as offer a bit of advice. Student views, I need you to listen. The Chicago Department of Revenue that collects the money for tickets. I understand sometimes people need to be given parking tickets or moving violation tickets, but they are way too steep. And putting a boot on someone's car after only two it, tickets is just kind of inhumane. Everyone can't afford that. I do want the mayor to do something about our educational system. I feel there is not enough teachers in the classroom. According to the teacher-student ratio, is not enough teachers in the classroom. And I think that there's something that needs to be done about that. That's my most important fact, considering I have a son in grade school. What I expect from the new mayor is someone who actually, truly, passionately care for the city of Chicago. And by that, I mean someone who can bring work into the city, bring jobs, make sure that the community is safe, and also just, just make it a clean place to live. You need someone who can not only follow in his shoes or his footsteps, but also continue to help the uh, urban community, the Latino community, and we all come together. I just need a safer city. Like last summer, there were too many killings in, Chicago, in the Chicago area, and they just really need to, you know, buckle down and really get these people out here with these guns and get these drugs off the streets and just make Chicago a safer city. We want to thank the McCormick Foundation and the Field Foundation for the Student Views segment. Give us a call, 773-487-3630, 773-487-3630. The young people have spoken quickly. Amy, any rebuttal, anything you want to add to the mix as we just heard the youth response as well as consensus candidacy? I'll just quickly talk about the consensus candidacy. In the Hispanic community, I really don't think it is that important. When it comes to immigration, I know people are upset about Rahm Emanuel. They've had protests against him. <laughs> but come on, we're, we're all mixed racial families. I have two Latino children, two Puerto Ricans. We're all, I don't even see race in this candidacy. And I don't think the African American community, and I'm not speaking on behalf of them, but 70% from the latest poll I saw are voting for Rahm Emanuel. Yep. So yep. 70%. That's yeah, one of the polls the that I saw. Poll. The latest yeah. poll. Seventy percent are voting for Rahm and the African that are registered African American voters. You, you, here. Amy, you just verify what happened earlier this week with our cameras that we sent in the streets, as well as last week. We went to the west side, we went to the south side, we went up north. It's amazing. The African American Hispanics almost to a fault saying, oh, I wish I could vote for that other candidate, mm -hmm. but they probably won't win. Therefore, they're going with what they perceive as being the winner. Let me go to some Facebook comments here quickly. It looks like Dawn from Hyde Park, she says, there's a perceived bias by the media when you get more press due to a high profile uh, fundraising. It looks like Michelle says, I agree for the most part, Chicagoans and Americans are superficial and they will go with the popular vote. Let me take a phone call here. Caller, you're on the line, you're on off 63rd. What's your comment, caller? Looks like the caller's gone right now. You know what, let's talk about the polls influencing voters. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, but it, uh, uh, come on, who is being polled? Uh, are they going in the African American community to poll people? Are they going to the Northwest Side? Are they going what? to that Milwaukee? Was, I haven't touched on the Polish neighborhood. Landlines. They're polling people with landlines. And a lot of people under the age mm -hmm. of 35 have cell phones. Some of them don't even have landlines. What's a so, landline? Uh, no, uh, is it, there we go. Right? What is uh, that? Okay. It's all cellular and mobile, right? You know, iPad. So I think you're absolutely right. Who are we polling? Sure. Uh, Lee Allen, then I'm going to come to Hermine. What problems do you find with polling? I mean, you know, we saw, we see the numbers fluctuate 
for the last three, four weeks. It's a, it's a very objective process that is very subjective, though, uh, in terms of trying to uh, ascertain voter sentiment on particular issues. Uh, I, I think that until we can find uh, new metrics that can go into polling that is more accurate, mm. uh, I, I don't think that there is really any way of, of, of knowing where, where polling actually is when you take into consideration that you have more people on cell phones as opposed to traditional uh, hard wire lines, you, that you have a lot of people that you know you just can't contact. Uh, if you look at the fact of what happened between uh, the, the presidential run in 08, uh, you know, though we couldn't even find those voters. You had almost 100 to 200,000 people that had voted uh, for Barack and pres for the presidency Missing. that were gone in 2010. Missing so until we can until we can go through a methodology that takes into the race, that takes into age, that takes into being uh, uh, one that uses technology and the one that doesn't, that, that pol polling has not been accurate. If we go back to 2000 with the Gore, yeah, uh, uh, right. uh, with the Gore race. classic example. Quickly, Amy, then I got to go to Hermes Scott and a phone call. Scott Rasmussen predicted Bill Brady would beat Governor Quinn by six points. Didn't Never happen. happened. Didn't happen. Never happened. And since that time, I'm like, all right, question authority again. There so you go. So much for Who polling. polling? Hermes, no. I'm going did, to the phones. We did five polls. Indigo did five polls, okay? And the reason we did polls is uh, going back to Harold Washington when, when he ran. Not one major station in this city, not one major newspaper in this city <laughs> got it right. Nobody got it right, okay? Clearly, they were not polling everybody. Polling is difficult, but polling gives you a snapshot at a particular time and moment. Now, polls change because if there's a debate, mm. uh, as in the case with Harold Washington, the polls, you know, they, uh, I saw them change. Yes. Now, if, uh, if a candidate uh, has a mishap in one of the debates, then the polls the next day will probably change. Yeah. So who's, who's polling? I don't think anything is wrong with the polls. I don't think they poll everybody. I don't think there's a perfect poll. No. I did polling. All of my polling was online. Older people said to me, yeah, but what about us? You We're us. not. You excluded you, you us. You know what? And speaking yeah. of exclusion, we are running out of time oh, right now on no. off 63rd. Let me just ask this quickly before I close. Amy, do we need more Republicans running for mayor in Chicago? Talk to me, Amy. Well, there are Republicans. <laughs> there are. Oh, What's a Republican? Yeah, absolutely. Hi. In no, Chicago. No, I'm not the poster child. <laughs> no, there's um, 100, about 115,000 registered Republican voters in the city of Chicago. And when Gary Chico distanced himself, I understand distancing yourself from the Tea Party, but. Come on, you're alienating 115,000 people. There we go. You know, we got to go. If you don't vote, don't complain. Get out to vote on this Tuesday. It is your privilege, and you need to use it. I want to thank my guests, Amy Jacobson, Hermine Hartman, and Lee Allen Jones. And thanks to my callers. You have less than a week to choose your next mayor. Call me after the show and tell me what's on your mind. We may play your voice on the next show. The number is 773-487-1352. My email is... Gerard at off63rd.com. Forgot my own email. And that's off 63rd for tonight. I need you to join us next Thursday. Victory is yours. Stay positive. Keep your head up and always be encouraged. Good night. <laughs>